everyone, Misco Electric here. I'm in Miami, Florida this weekend for the ABB Formula E race at the Homestead Miami Speedway. And although this is a track most known for its oval on the NASCAR schedule, this will be the first time Formula E is racing at this track. Episode 58 is brought to you by ABB, a global technology leader driving sustainable and efficient solutions in electrification and automation. Today is Sunday, April 13th, 2025, and this is is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. On Wednesday, South Korean automaker Kia held its annual CEO Investor Day, detailing their updated electrification plans through 2030. As part of their Plan S strategy, they aim to sell 1.26 million EVs annually by 2030. This figure represents a pullback of about 340,000 units compared to their 2023 CEO Investor Day projection. For context, Kia delivered 201,000 all-electric models globally in 2024. With a goal to produce 4 million total vehicles across varying powertrains, pure battery electric models are expected to account for about 30% of Kia's sales by the end of the decade. Kia plans to expand its EV lineup with high-volume models, including the EV2, EV3 and EV4 with localized manufacturing to meet global demand. The company also highlighted its PBV electric van segment, targeting 250,000 annual sales by 2030, starting with the PV5 in 2025 and followed by the PV7 in 2027 and PV9 in 2029. I published a very detailed standalone video on the platform Beyond Vehicles, and we've included a link to that in this video's description if you want to learn more. Interestingly enough, the company said they will connect their PV models with their parent company's electric vertical takeoff and landing brand, Supernull's aircraft, to create a seamless multimodal transportation network. Additionally, Kia announced their plan for an electric pickup truck for North America to complement its upcoming Tasman model, which is launching in Korea and Australia. The company plans to reach an annual run rate of 90,000 electric pickup units in the long term. There were no details on specifications, but the brand commented, the vehicle will have the best interior and cargo space in its class, a robust trailer system, off-road capability, and advanced infotainment and safety features. This year, Kia remains on track to launch five new models, one product enhancement model, and three derivatives. The brand said they will improve EV customer service by expanding specialized maintenance networks, introducing certified EV repair training programs, and providing remote diagnostic services. I have personally trained thousands of Kia EV service advisors and managers all over the U.S. on EV fundamentals and product specifics, and I'm particularly excited and happy to see that the brand is leveling up EV service training programs. It's especially important in the light of their reiteration of intent to introduce 15 all-new fully electric models over the next five years. Which upcoming Kia EV are you most looking forward to? California-based commercial electric truck manufacturer Harbinger announced the official start of production for its American-made medium-duty truck platform at their Garden Grove facility. The company has already produced over 100 units, delivering them to customers such as Thor Industries, the major RV manufacturer which owns notable brands including Airstream, Jayco, and Keystone RV. Thor is an investor in electric travel trailer manufacturer Lightship as well as Harbinger. Harbinger's chassis is designed specifically for medium duty vehicles such as walk-in vans, box trucks, RVs, delivery vans, and emergency and disaster response vehicles. Harbinger assembles a stripped chassis and dealers or customers work with a third party to upfit the chassis with a commercial or specialty body. I had the chance to see some of Harbinger's platform and technology up close when they debuted it at the Detroit Auto Show back in 2022. They told me the platform is designed for a 20-year, 450,000-mile standard operating life, which reaches parity with its diesel-powered counterparts. Their medium-duty 800-volt platform offers three battery options including a 105 kilowatt hour battery pack with an estimated 125 miles of range, 140 kilowatt hour battery pack for 165 miles, and a 175 kilowatt hour battery pack projecting 205 miles. The initial plan was to begin delivering products in late 2023 with volume production launching in 2024. 
If you had not heard of Harbinger, the company was founded in 2021 by John Harris, Philip Weicker, and Will Eberts, a trio of industry veterans with extensive experience in electric vehicles and automotive technology. John Harris, the CEO, formerly worked as an engineer at Boeing, Faraday Future, and Exos Trucks, managing high voltage systems. Philip Weicker, the chief technology officer, is a co-founder of Canoe and worked at Faraday Future, QuantumScape, and Coda Automotive as a director of battery systems. Will Eberts, the chief operating officer, also worked at Canoe and Faraday Future, managing battery systems. The start of production milestone follows a $100 million Series B funding round and an order book of 4,690 vehicles valued at about a half a billion dollars. Harbinger joins fellow medium-duty electric platform competitors to the market like Bollinger, Exos Trucks, Navistar, and Centro. Pebble, a California-based electric travel trailer startup, has officially begun production of its first model, the Pebble Flow. The production units are powered by a 45 kilowatt hour battery with 1100 watts of rooftop solar generation and can be equipped with electric propulsion motors. The company says first deliveries of the exclusive Founders Edition will take place within two months. The version offers at least one unique exterior color, automated hitching and setup features, exclusive accessories, club membership, and priority delivery for $175,000. The entry-level standard model with a starting price of $109,500 is scheduled to begin deliveries next year. I've produced several videos with the Pebble Flow throughout its development process. A few months ago, I even towed a pre-production flow behind a Rivian using their Easy Tow system in order to experience the self-propelling electric powertrain. I've included links to that detailed coverage in this video's description. It was pretty amazing. It is encouraging to see more electrified startups in different industries surviving to production. I'm looking forward to bringing you some real world reviews of electric RVs, including the Pebble Flow later this year. So stay tuned. Lucid Motors won an auction of Nikola Motors manufacturing headquarters and warehouse facilities, along with development equipment with extensive battery and environmental testing chambers, a full-size chassis dynamometer, machining equipment, and more. Mark Winterhoff, interim CEO at Lucid Motors said, as we continue our production ramp of Lucid Gravity and prepare our upcoming mid-size platform vehicles, acquiring these assets is an opportunity to strategically expand our manufacturing, warehousing, testing, and development facilities while supporting our local Arizona community. We are delighted to extend employment offers to more than 300 former employees who bring valuable industry experience and together with our outstanding teams will continue powering Lucid's industry-leading innovation. Lucid's acquisition includes a total of 884,000 square feet across multiple buildings for $30 million, with 671,000 square feet in just the manufacturing facility. The 15-minute drive to Lucid's existing Casa Grande factory in Arizona is of great value, though. It's worth noting that in this purchase, Lucid did not buy any of Nikola's hydrogen electric business or their customer base. EV charging provider ChargePoint has announced their latest modular level two charging equipment, which features bi-directional charging capabilities for residential, commercial, and fleet buyers. The system can provide up to 80 amps or 19.2 kilowatts of power through its Omniport connector system, which supports J1772 and NAX ports. The equipment supports series wiring for multiple chargers with standard dynamic load management. Essentially, that means multiple vehicles can receive optimal power when energy is limited. This new AC hardware will also incorporate ChargePoint's anti-theft technology, including cut-resistant cables and cable tamper alert system. The first models are scheduled to arrive in Europe this summer and in North America at the end of this year. ChargePoint was an early level two mover in the U.S. market and has about 60% market share, but now it faces abundant competition. It was founded in 2007 and is operating with net losses. The company went public back in April of 2022 via a special acquisition merger. But this February, the company received a notice of deficiency when their stock price dropped below a dollar for more than 30 consecutive trading days. Shares are currently trading at 58 cents. A large number of installed ChargePoint Level 2 locations are presently out of service. 
At the EV Charging Summit and Expo a couple of weeks ago, we came across one company with a product line geared towards liberating disabled hardware from costly ChargePoint network service and subscription fees. Do you think this new AC hardware could turn things around for ChargePoint? This week, Tesla began selling the most affordable variant of their full-sized electric pickup truck in the U.S. and Saudi Arabian markets. The new single-motor rear-wheel drive long-range trim carries the same 123 kilowatt-hour battery pack as the dual and tri-motor variants, but it achieves 350 miles of range standard or up to 362 miles with the optional $750 soft tonneau cover. In order to achieve lower costs, the single-motor version deletes and augments many features found on the all-wheel drive and tri-motor Cyberbeast. For example, the long-range model rides on a coil spring suspension with about 9 inches of ground clearance. Higher-end trims have an air suspension, which increase clearance up to 16 inches and pressurize the battery pack for extended submersion in wade mode. The single-motor Cybertruck offers a mechanical rear locking differential with a lower towing capacity of 7,500 pounds down from 11,000 pounds and 2,006 pounds of payload down from 2,500 pounds. On top of that, the 0 to 60 mile per hour acceleration will drop to 6.2 seconds compared to 2.6 seconds for the Cyber Beast. It comes standard with a new smaller 18 inch wheel too. The bed has the same dimensions of six foot by four foot, but it lacks L tracks, 120 volt and 240 volt power outlets, or a solid power tonneau cover option, which are standard on higher trim levels. It's worth mentioning that AC power can still be provided with the optional power share accessory, which connects to the NAX port. The new cabin upholstery is textile and it has a basic seven speaker audio system. The front seats are heated, but cooling and rear seat heat have been deleted along with the rear passenger infotainment and climate control screen. This comes just a couple of weeks after GMC released a more affordable version of their Sierra EV pickup. Now this is how the Cybertruck stacks up against its competitors on paper. The price is far from Tesla's original promise of the single motor Cybertruck starting at $39,900 when it was first announced. A new bare bones full sized gasoline pickup truck can be had for well under $40,000. Do you think this new entry price will expand the buying pool enough to keep the Cybertruck manufacturing line humming at Giga Texas? Those are our top EV news stories for this week. We've recently published several episodes of our In Charge Leadership interview series filmed at the EV Charging Summit. You can find them on YouTube at Misco Electric Industry if you're ready to stay in learning mode. And don't forget to join me on X, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok for real-time updates and fun stories which might not fit into the current or on YouTube. We've been sharing quite a bit from this Formula E weekend. Thank you to ABB for sponsoring this episode and to all of you for joining me this week. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.